We have officially made it to the Azores. Hi everybody. Hello. We're going to be doing something kind of special this week and that is seven videos, one for each day, addressing a review of our Atlantic crossing. So the first video, which is today's, is going to focus on the highlights and the lows of the crossing. We'll start with highlights. So um, we have individual highlights <laughs> to begin with. For me, the highlight was actually arriving in Horta. <laughs> And, and for me, the highlight was the whole trip. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I really, um, I'm so glad that we did this trip. And the reason the highlight is the actual arrival is because for me, the best part is being able to tell myself that I did it. To have overcome such an intense challenge and to have arrived and be able to just know that I crossed the Atlantic Ocean in a sailboat <laughs> with just Herbie <laughs> and myself. I mean, that's and just... no motor. <laughs> yes. That's an incredible accomplishment. And just the feeling I get from having done that made the entire trip worth it for me. That's probably my biggest highlight. What's yours? So... For me, the Atlantic crossing was more of a thing that I've been planning for a lot of years. So to me, the biggest highlight was doing it and doing it quickly. So when we first left Bermuda, we were clocking more than 100 miles per day, which that was one of my big highlights because <laughs> I was focused on how fast can we sail and how can we get the most performance out of the boat while keeping the risk to the boat at a minimum. So achieving 100 miles a day was awesome for and, me. And we did most days. <laughs> yeah, because like up until then, if we got 80 miles in a day, we thought we were flying. So I was thinking that we're just an exceedingly slow boat or that we're doing something wrong or something like that. So finally getting the 100 mile mark was like hitting a, a major milestone for us. Yeah, we were really happy about that. Another highlight I'd say would be even though we barely fished at all, <laughs> catching fish. Caught two fish. We caught two. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't try very hard, but... Um, just catching two fish and then eating them and just like living off of the water like that yeah, was like, a really cool experience. I mean, purely living off the water yeah. because the bait was provided the night before in the form of flying fish that landed on our deck. Like uh, <laughs> we were working together with nature. Yeah. So that was really cool. Um, on that topic, I would say that the wildlife that we saw, oh, yeah. even though it was like in very small increments. <laughs> yeah, you'd have days of nothing. Yeah. And then a huge pot of dolphins would come out. Yeah. And it was amazing. We had two experiences yeah. with dolphins yep. um, and two experiences with whales. And they were both, like, packed in the same yeah, the, days. <laughs> the whales were, like, a couple seconds. Like, the whale would show up and then leave. And there was, you know, a couple whales surfaced. And then the dolphins would be, like, minutes. Like, they'd come around, yeah. like, play around the boat and bow ride so awesome so they were atlantic spotted dolphins and the whales we saw were um northern bottlenose whale yes and sperm whales yeah uh so that was a huge thing and also uh just the amount of portuguese man of war that we saw yeah. just kind of like casually floating <laughs> by the boat that was really cool <laughs> yeah because so i grew up in puerto rico so in the summer like you'd see the portuguese man of war wash into the reefs and people would always tell you that, oh, these are from deep out in the ocean and just all that. And then to be out there where these suckers come from. So yeah, that was like a childhood dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last bit of wildlife that we saw, honestly, it wasn't that much, but it was, it made night watches absolutely amazing was the uh, bioluminescence. Yeah. And one night in particular. So usually yeah. we'd have the, they're called dinoflagellites and when you agitate the water, they'll glow. So, so like all yeah. around the boat, yeah, your just wake and around the perimeter of the boat, there's yeah. like every wave that we kind of create was just yeah. scattered with all these little glittery lights and it was just magical. But this one night, yeah. it was, uh, I don't know what they were. They didn't respond to touch, they responded to light. So when we shine, shone a torch down into the water, 
they'd all sparkle and glow, glow yeah. and light up. And so you could was, kind of like paint yeah. with light in the water. It was oh, so cool. It was surreal. Because we yeah. had the stars above and then the stars down below. and oh. <laughs> Yeah. It was just like one of those like moments where we'll never forget it. You had to be there to fully appreciate it. Sadly, the camera couldn't capture it. Yeah. So it's just kind of like our our personal moment which makes it even more magical in a way and that was it for the wildlife let's see other highlights um the stars were amazing oh, the stars yeah there is no light pollution in the absolute middle of the ocean and wow <laughs> i mean if i had to choose hmm, if i had to choose like one thing about the crossing itself that was the most incredible and magical it would be the stars yeah yeah. Um, every, almost every night, sometimes it was a little more clouded over, but during your night watch, it was, you could just lie back and look up and then it would be an hour later. Like, And also you'd watch the Milky Way just like yeah. come over the horizon in your night watch. It mm -hmm. was just, wow. We had a very special connection sort of with Scorpio. Yeah, we, Neither of us is a Scorpio. <laughs> no, we are not Scorpios. But and Scorpio kind of was a beacon. Every single night Scorpio would come out as one of the brightest constellations. And it was just, it was always on our right. Yeah. And he just, he was like this Hi. <laughs> peaceful guide that just took us across the Atlantic. And I just, it always kind of just made me feel comforted. Because you're so alone out there. Yeah. It's just this dome that's completely uninterrupted. You feel like you're on this disc of water. And then there's this dome above you of just... Infinite. Infinite stars. Like, layers and layers. Um, and coming from Baltimore, where it's like, oh, the star is out tonight. <laughs> it was just so cool to be able to be like, and there are four planets all right there. And I can see them. Um yeah. So that was cool. We do recommend the app. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Skyview. Skyview. That was how we yeah. looked up. That's the how we. Yeah, that's how like, we saw that? what each constellation was. <laughs> Before we left, we learned how to find Polaris, the North Star, mm -hmm. and how to navigate from it, and a couple constellations to help confirm that you're looking at Polaris. Because if you're navigating by the wrong star, you're in trouble. That was so, another highlight for you, the navigation oh, yes. by sextant. Yeah. So I'd learned, or I'd read how to work the sextant and how to do all the calculations. And then when we got out there, I actually put it to practice. And I started off eh, pretty far off. And then towards the end, like I was within a couple miles of where we actually were. So mm -hmm. that was a huge, huge boon to me. Also kind of going along with all that, the sunsets were oh. another, I mean, you hear everybody say it. No, it's, but the sunsets. It's insane though. Every single night you get a sunset. And they're so different. And they're unique. Yeah, each one. And it's just, they're so powerful. I mean, you'd think like you'd get, okay, another sunset, here we go. But when you get to experience it with no interruptions and with the reflection in the water, yeah, it was like a <laughs> highlight of our, of our day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, are, there isn't much to look at out there. <laughs> so yeah. when something becomes beautiful, it's like a really exciting moment. <laughs> okay. So I know that's kind of a lot, but those were the absolute highlights of the trip. It wasn't all good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, there were moments of frustration. And There's a reason not everyone goes out and crosses the ocean. Yeah, it's it was extremely easy. challenging. Um, and there were definitely a lot of low moments, uh, which made the high moments even better. But we have to mention them. And um, for me, the biggest low for me was just pure boredom. I mean, oh my gosh, you're out there. It took us 24 days, um, from Bermuda to the Azores, but it took us 21 days from Florida to Bermuda. So I think that entire first leg was just a low for everybody. Um, we're going to have another video that's just about crew versus no crew yeah but it was a very negative experience um for us not all bad but mostly bad yeah. <laughs> uh so we're gonna go into that later but that was definitely a low like that whole passage mostly because we got caught in those doldrums and it was just so dull yeah the weather was confusing and we felt we had to leave because of crew reasons mm -hmm. and then it was just 
then we got stuck with absolutely no win. Yeah, so uh, that was the biggest low. Um, yeah. Boredom was also a problem, though, all through the second leg, even when it was just the two of us, because, you know, I read, like, seven books. That was great. But there's only so much reading I can do. <laughs> and there was a lot of just, like, sleeping and not really, like, a just uh, same view every day almost. <laughs> So that was kind of, it was a challenge for sure. And it made getting there all the sweeter because it was like, there was a lot of just like sitting there and wishing for things to do. Yeah. Another big low was trying to cook and eat in heavy weather. Yeah. The boat's just beating around and we don't have a gimbaled stove. We're getting a gimbaled stove. (laughs) For (laughs) that reason. Yeah. That was, that was the worst. Like you don't want to cook because you don't want to stand by the stove. And you're hungry, but you don't want to eat because your food's just, like, sloshing all over the place. Mm-hmm. It's It was just, like, worst. inconvenient to eat, inconvenient to cook. So we were forced to eat this, like, kind of nasty slop that you saw in one of our videos that yeah. maybe... That, or else we ate, like, bread and, like, a little bit of jelly or, like, or peanut yeah, butter. Like, or, like, fruit out of a can. Yeah, like, it was, like, There's just very little you can do when the weather is super heavy. Yeah. Sometimes I would cook, like, on the floor... <laughs> Just, it was not a positive experience, uh, and eating for us is, like, really yeah. important. We it's, like to make good <laughs> it's meals. It's our joy. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, in the second leg, we had four days of absolute becalmed. Which was a nice change. It was a, it was a break from the heavy weather. Yeah, we were able to cook, which was phenomenal, but, but then... the current pushed us back 40 miles, which is half a day sailing. Yeah, so that was and, a little bit frustrating yeah, for us. Yeah, so we we planned when we left Bermuda that we'd get to the Azores in 18 days. And the last day of being becalmed was day 18, and we still had like 800 miles to go or something. So that was... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that was especially a low for me, because it yeah. was like, knowing that you that like you could we have been done, and you still have a week to go, at least, that's like a really... And we weren't hard sure hard thing to deal with. Yeah, we weren't sure when the winds were going to come back. We yeah. thought they'd be coming back on the fourth day or day eighteen, but we didn't know. Yeah, there were moments of frust- major frustration uh, when it came to unexpected leaks that we found in the boat. Yeah, there was one day where we woke up and just everything in the salon here where we yeah. are right now was just soaked in salt was water. Soaked. And it came down through the chimney of our heater. So then it picked up diesel soot and just, like, filth Sprayed everywhere. everything oh. with blackness. Like, oh, it was gross. So we had to, yeah. like, clean that up in heavy weather. And and then, like, oh. we had boarding waves coming over and they, like, smash into the drag, the cow, and just come right into the cabin. Like, it was... Yeah, I mean, you try. You try to address all of your leaks before you leave. But sometimes... There's always one. You know, you're unaware. Like, just with boats, this is a thing. Especially old boats. Um, You never know. You're going to have waves coming in from all different directions that you really weren't expecting. So, you never know. (laughs) You know? And also, we had rogue waves. Uh, Rogue waves. rogue waves are exceedingly rare. Mm -hmm. And you'll just be sitting in the cockpit. And everything's nice and fine. And then just a wave comes in and just gushes you with water. And you're just totally drenched. With salt water. With salt water, yeah. (laughs) Like you were warm and cozy and just sitting around reading. And then just huge wave out of nowhere. And then it's gone. And then it's like still calm out. And you're like, where did that come from? Uh, Another low was equipment breaking. Because my goal when I built Wisdom or rebuilt Wisdom was to make her like bomb proof like just indestructible and we can just keep going all the time so that's why whenever anything breaks it really like hurts my soul (laughs) because i i really thought through all the potential things that could go wrong and made sure that they were all accounted for and protected against but you can never ever be totally sure yeah i mean something is going to break and it was something minor like our stern light just the wire corroded Mm -hmm. and then the stern light wasn't working so then that night we had no stern light so we had to be like super careful um for me i have a very sensitive stomach uh seasickness was Thankfully, not as big a problem as we were anticipating. Yeah, she only threw up in the beginning. (laughs) Yeah, I only got sick in the beginning, um, but there was that night that I got sick from the fish. We think it's from the fish. Uh, Herbie didn't get sick. But I never get sick. But he never gets sick, so who knows? He has an iron stomach, but it was really horrible being that sick on the boat. Like, when you have a composting toilet and... (laughs) 
I mean, I don't need to go into details, but, you know, when you're on the toilet and throwing up in the sink at the same time, and the boat's rocking, and there's not much you can do, it's just, like, yeah, miserable. <laughs> so that, that night was, like, horrible. But, you know, you get through it, and... And then the next day's better. The next day, you just sleep. Yeah. Relax, and, uh, yeah, it's not great, but, um, that was definitely a low point for, for sure. And then finally, uh, I would say one, it wasn't like a low point, but it was just a big challenge that I had to overcome was just the lack of communication, I guess, with other people and like the loneliness that you feel out in the middle of the ocean for such an extended period of time. Herbie's an introvert. That was fine. So he was fine. Like it was it was actually great for him. But for me as an extrovert, I crave um social interaction and communication and uh what's great is that Herbie and I we could talk forever and um I was listening to podcasts and stuff, so I always ha- we always had stuff to talk about. Uh, our future is planned out to a T because we had so much time to talk. But uh, that doesn't take away from the fact that we didn't have any real interaction with other people. Yeah. And we couldn't see any other boats. Uh, I did feel just starved for communication and socialization. Uh, it wasn't as bad as I anticipated. I will say it was okay. But it was something where near the end, I was starting to go a little bit insane. I could have kept going. Yeah. <laughs> I was having a great time. I was time. really ready to get there when we got there. So, you know, that's just something that I was expecting and I knew I would have to overcome. And other than that, I mean, the trip was incredible. I wouldn't take it back for anything. The highlights were well worth the low points. Yeah, the highlights are just amazing. Like when people first asked us, you know, how was it? I forgot about all the rogue waves. Like, all the little things that, like, bothered me throughout the trip, all gone. It was just amazing and just the, the most awesome thing I've done. I say, when people ask me how was it, I say, incredibly boring, but incredibly rewarding. Uh, those were, like, the two big words I would use to describe it. <laughs> Yeah. And boring is good. Boring means that we didn't have huge problems. Yeah. You know, we were mostly just sitting around doing nothing, watching watching the waves. So, yay. <laughs> um, and I think that concludes our first video of the week, highlights and lows. Yeah. Um, so if you're thinking about crossing an ocean, be yeah. prepared, but do it. It is so <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions or want to respond to anything we've said... Or if you have any specific things you want to hear in future videos of this week, please leave them in the comments below. We will be sure to address them. We really want this to be kind of a more conversational week. So yeah. we'd love to include you guys as best we can. Um, yeah, so let us know. And then at the end of the week, we'll go through all the comments that were asked. Mm -hmm. And address them personally. We will mention your names and everything. So yeah. uh, thank you guys. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.